Timelig or Tig Malaga owes its name to a young man, Lochan by name. In the early Irish church, the prefix Ma was added to the names of certain holy men. From this practice evolved the name forms of many patrons of churches. Thus, Lochan became Malochan Og, whence Malaga. His first church was at Tullock Min. He was affected at an early age by what early writers described as the Irish habit of going away, and crossed to Scotland and later to Wales. He spent 12 years in Wales and became a close friend of Saint David. He is possibly the Saint Malak or Madoc often mentioned in the lives of Saint David. On his return to Ireland, he built a church near Balbriggan on land given to him by a local chieftain. Here he is said to have brought bees to Ireland for the first time. Later he spent some time in Clonmac Noise and then returned home. Ireland is said to have been visited by a great place in the year of our Lord, 664. Malaga was greatly loved by his people because he shared their danger and cared for them in illness. Every school child in the district knows the lovely legend of how he founded his monastery in Timalig. Malaga and his companions chose several other places, but what they built by day fell by night. He then took a lighting candle from the altar, placed it on a sheaf of corn, and set it afloat on the waters of the Aragadine, and prayed that God would direct it to where he wished him to build his church. They then followed followed the leaf and candle, Tig Malaga, the house of Malaga, was built where the sheaf floated ashore, on or near the site of the current friary. Legends have vitality and continue, because in their origin they so exactly serve to explain or illustrate some personal character in a man which no cold statement could give. It is possible to discern a certain aptness in the beehive, the blessed candle and the sheaf of corn as symbols of a community, where the gospel and careful husbandry have struck such deep roots. Timalig Friary became a great house of learning that was known the known worldwide. On one occasion a party of 100 English infantry, 50 cavalry, sacked Timalig Friary, burning pictures and smashing images and stained glass. The story was recorded soon afterwards that a carpenter employed there vowed to Saint Francis that he would never again work in the monastery if he did not bring about the punishment of the soldiers. The following day Donal O'Sullivan and a company of 80 infantry men met the raiding party and inflicted a heavy defeat upon them. Protestant Bishop of Cork planned violent action against the friars that remained in Timalig. In the year 1590 he removed part of the material of the monastery mill and used them to build one of his own. He had hardly completed the work when the whole structure was swept away by a strong flood. Soon afterwards he visited the friary to remove the millstones. He was suddenly seized with such a great terror that he left the place immediately with his workmen. In 1596 one Dr. Hanmer, an English minister, obtained permission of the royal council to remove the oak wainscoting from the cells of the monastery. He removed his loot by sea, but the ship and all on board were lost in a sudden storm a short time after setting sail. This is the only ship to be lost in this almost most landlocked harbour. Only mystery and folk tales are left regarding anything of value that was once within the walls. There is a story of some boys playing at the walls and they discovered an old parchment volume in a cavity and before any adult could stop them they had used the volume as a football and left it to a sow to finish off the work and thus perished what might have been a valuable relic from the library of the monastery. Another is a story of a box. In the distant past, some fishermen of the island came on a boat drifting at sea. In it were three friars, two dead and the third utterly exhausted. Their survivor was brought to Cape Clear. He left this box in the custody of the people of the house until his return. At the pastor's request, the box was opened. It contained a vestment which crumbled on the touch. Underneath was a chalice bearing the inscription, Con Timilagi. This chalice was probably saved from the final sack of the friary, is now once again in Timilig, in the keeping of the parish priest. A great storm swept through the harbour and brought massive amounts of sand into it and thus great ships were no longer able to come to the friary. After centuries of silence, on the 28th of June 1891, Franciscan monks from Cork made a pilgrimage to Timalig and mass was once again celebrated within the walls of the monastery. The papal colours and the green flag with a harp were flown from the tower.